Today we're going to be going into our camera cases and what we bring on a photo video shoot within these cases. So we're not going to be talking about C-stands, lighting, any of that other stuff. It's just what's in our cases. So hold on to your seats because it's going to get crazy. Just kidding, it's not. It's just, it's just normal. We normally carry two X-T4s in this bin. This is like our camera case, even though there's other camera equipment that falls into that other case. But anyways, this is our camera case. So we normally have an X-T4, which we call our X-T4-1, and this is our X-T4-2. They're in different cages. That's how we know the difference. But when we're importing footage, that's what we call the different cameras, X-T4-1, X-T4-2. Uh, we then have a beautiful SD card case that uh, holds all of our SD cards. We normally shoot on 256 gig SD cards. Uh, that normally lasts just an entire day if we're shooting photo video mix, uh, maybe even a couple shoots, depending on the, the length of the shoots. We then have our beautiful filter pouch here. The filters, we have these Freewell free uh, ND filters. They work good enough if we have to use an ND filter. Uh, we end up switching between photo and video a lot, so we don't necessarily use them all the time like we should, but we try to do our best because we like to be cinematic. We also have the, uh, what are these? Black Pro Mist filters. We have a 1 4th and a 1 8th. So these we use very rarely, but it works uh, when it works. So don't ask questions, just shut up, sit down, enjoy the show. <laughs> then we've got the Sigma 18 to 35. This guy is our go-to video lens. We, uh, Fujifilm, great at making cameras, sucks at making video lenses. So we use this beautiful Sigma 18 to 35 uh, lens and any of those Fuji guys, we're the biggest Fujifilm, Fil Fujifilm diehards you'll ever meet. We're shooting this on an X-T4, an X-T2, we have an X-H1 and two X-T4s. We can be critical. They suck at making video lenses and don't tell me their F4 lenses are good. Okay, we then have the 50, one, beautiful lens. Okay, beautiful lens. We use it for photo, video, mainly portrait work, uh, studio stuff, anything fast moving this lens sucks at. This guy is the 16. We've also been using the, this is the Fujifilm 16 1.4. We've also been using the Sigma, not the Sigma, the Viltrox 13, which has kind of replaced a lot of the scenarios where we use this because we were using this to get wider and it just wasn't wide enough when you're shooting on the X-T4s. The Fujifilm 23 1.4 Mark II, fantastic lens. Every way possible, this lens is amazing. Fast focus, 1.4, build quality, everything knocked it out the park. Then we have our fun little, this guy's funky looking. So this is our 35, anywhere I pull this out, everyone, you know, makes fun of me because of the size of the lens. But uh, we have filter threads, as, as you can kind of see on all of these. They all work with the same size filters, and we don't have to worry about different size filters or changing filter threads, anything like that. It all works seamlessly amongst all of our lenses. That is the camera case. Now we're jumping into the accessories. So we're going to dive into this case. As you can see, it's a little bit more messy than the other one. Uh, that is not by design, but by necessity because we work fast, things get messed up. This is, this is normal though. So we didn't do any like cleaning up for you guys, so don't feel special. So we're gonna start on this top section of the bag, the top section of the box. And uh, yeah, so we've got a cute little system here where we put all of our charged batteries in this top pouch. Then once they're done being charged, we drop them into this little hole here for uh, dead batteries. It's the dead battery grave. So they go there and then until they're resurrected and charged again, upstairs in our office. So they go from here to here when we use them, no dead batteries go in there and no charge batteries go in here. Big, big rule, big no, no. If anyone does that, don't mix your batteries. We then have audio. We've got lav mics, uh, basically a lot of lav, lav mics. And then we also put uh, our road wireless in here. Uh, we then have the Rode Wireless 2 down here, but that's kind of skipping. So then we have our beautiful tether cable, which we use. We try to use as much as possible. Uh, tethering is the way. Uh, 
It is the best way to shoot if you're shooting commercial work so your clients can see uh, right what you're shooting and they're happy from the get-go. There's, there's no weird waiting period where they can't see the pictures because they're not edited. You can have them go right into your computer, apply a little preset, and you know the client gets to see them, they're happy. There's, there's really great software out there. It's called Capture One. If you're still using Lightroom, get in the game, switch to Capture One. It's fantastic. I cannot talk about it enough. Uh, then we go into this little pouch, this is kind of knickknacks. We've got our Allen wrenches, uh, some stuff for our, our gobo, uh, some cage accessories, all that fun stuff in there. And then this is just more little miscellaneous knickknacks. Uh, we've got a micro adapter, little tube here for our lenses. So that way we don't have to own any specific micro lenses. Um, yeah, so that's in that top compartment. Now, going into the bottom. So we've got the Fujifilm 50 to 140, fantastic lens for what it does. Uh, absolutely beautiful, great image quality. Uh, and it lives in this case right here, and we use it a lot. So you may be wondering why do we use that versus the 50 to 140? Well, we're working on a video for that, and we'll link it in the description below once it's done. But they serve totally two different purposes. So that one is fantastic, and the 50, uh, 1.0 is also fantastic. We then, moving into this segment of the case, we have our audio. So we have the Rode NTG Go, I think is what it's called, Rode Video Mic NTG. This is a fantastic, it gives you uh, some different audio options while recording in camera, and it's definitely saved us a lot of the time instead of just using dual stereo audio tracks. Uh, fantastic little mic. We then have the Rode, get some of that Velcro action in there. We got the Rode Wireless Goes 2. We use these most of the time when we're, our, when we're shooting on set. If we gotta lob anyone up, we use those. And then we have the Rode Wireless Mics, not wireless mics, but the Rode, Rode Mics. Uh, we then have the Godox Pro Flash, the X-Pro Flash. Um, for Fujifilm, this controls our flashes when we have to use flash. We then have this little mic as a backup. This is the Rode Go, <laughs> the Rode Video Micro. So there's that guy. And then we have a fun little uh, thing for the Rode Wireless. It turns it into a little microphone. Uh, we cover a lot of events and just handing somebody a microphone that they can hold is a lot quicker than micing up everybody individually. Uh, and people kind of understand that when they're holding a mic, to hold it right here. Uh, just it's really quick, really fast, gets the job done, good quality audio. We then, uh, for events such as weddings, charity events, stuff where there is like a DJ playing that we can get a line out, we use the Zoom H5N, I think is what it's technically called, but it's the Zoom H5, and uh, it works great. Really nothing else to it. We then moving into, I'm, I'm going to pick this up real quick so that way we don't have a total mess. Okay, we're then moving into this other little section here. Uh, these guys are uh, the Hero 8 and the Hero 9. They are great little action cameras. They do the job. This guy we'll use for behind the scenes a lot of times. That's why we have it on this little uh, necklace thing. It goes around your neck and then magnetically sticks to your chest right here. So you kind of look like Iron Man. So that's our GoPros. And then we do have the Fujifilm X-H1. This is our primarily photo camera when we're shooting tethered. Uh, it comes with a tether lock that screws into the side here that you can wrap the cable around so it never gets tugged out. Uh, it makes tether shooting fantastic. You don't have to worry about damaging your ports. You don't have to worry about the cable coming undone. You're not transferring the pictures correctly. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, great, great camera. On this camera, we do have the Viltrox 13 millimeter lens, and it's a fantastic lens. We haven't used it a ton. We just got it a couple weeks ago, but we've used it. We've gone out and done some tests with it. It seems to be pretty sharp. The autofocus, the focus, the autofocus. The autofocus is very fast, uh, and it's a 1.4, great, great wide lens. So when you're shooting APS-C, uh, this actually ends up being about a 20 millimeter lens. Really good for what it does. 
We then move into this other little segment here, which is we do have two extra little filters for a lens that we haven't got a step up ring for. Those are just ND filters. And then we have the Loom Cube. I think it's a Loom Cube Mini or Go. Uh, this is a bicolor light. Let's see if there's any juice in here. We may have run it dead. There we go. And it uh, can go from zero to 100%. right? Um, or you can change the color temperature to go very warm or very cold. So that works really well if you're, uh, you know, you need to put a little light somewhere. Uh, it's great, especially for weddings. If you just need a little fill light while you're running around getting some video shots, works really well um, and just fits right here in the camera case. We then have the beautiful Sony MP batteries. Um, we use these on a couple lights that we have or the monitor. They all take these batteries and there's normally a, normally a couple of them that sit right here. Uh, and then we've got, okay, a camera strap. We don't normally shoot with a camera strap, but when we do, we get, keep this. I think this is the Peak Design Leash. It works pretty well. We then have a couple masks, uh, another, a couple adapters for that GoPro. That's what sits in there. And then we've got a couple pieces for camera cage. So we've got a top handle and a side handle. These both work when we're building out the cage around our Fuji X-T4, some gaff tape, and that ends what is in our camera case. Okay, that wraps up what's in my camera cases. I hope you enjoyed seeing kind of a behind the scenes look of what we bring on a shoot. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you see anything in here that you want, we'll try to provide links in the description at some point. But uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. No, okay.